focus on being pretty straightforward with the ideas. Not anything D minor. D harmonic minor. D minor. And top. That's all D minor 6. G minor 6. Maybe chromatic. trying to actually talk through some ideas, which is challenging, but I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna see if I can come up with some good ideas to share as an etude in there, but let's see. So I'm gonna just goof around. Maybe six. This is all just intro.
In, in a quick kind of a quick change which is very important to practice so it's actually a really beautiful spot to work in aim and then a d harmonic minor so i have two different ideas they're both d minor based but it's d minor add nine arpeggio it's kind of like the melody right and then uh and that i made that a quarter note but you can play right through that and then the slur into the C sharp note, and that really says, hey, harmonic minor. And then I did another slur, because I love those slurs. Those slurs. So the timing is. Here it is in time from the D minor. And again, that could be. See what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, but really the idea is D, in this case, D minor add nine, D harmonic minor. And that kind of, to me, really helps bring out the flavor. In front of it was this monster lick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, it, was, it was fun to write this. I, again, I, I, I want to practice it myself. <laughs> uh, it's, it's fun to write it out though, but um, uh, that's still A7 there. And this right here is a diminished seven arpeggio. So I think that's very important just to go do, 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 do. So again, it, we have a five chord. We've all done this together, hopefully. We resolve. The diminished arpeggio. Uh, fingering wise, I would write the fingering is something that you'd actually have to work out. That's what I would do. Let's watch my fingering for a second. Then I shift. And notice my shifting. That's what I think I want to point out with fingering. Shift. See that? If I didn't want to, if I didn't care about what came after it, I would just do this. See? I wouldn't shift because sh to me the shifting is important if you want to get into new territory, fingering-wise, to play a new idea. In that in case, in that case, you do have to work out your fingerings. So check it out, I'll continue, and I'll do the other shift. See the shift right there? So I shifted so that my first finger is on the 10th fret to get this, because I want to slur with my first and my third finger, or my second. So here's the whole lick. Shift. 
like a bee in two, three, four. Small details, but there's a lot to learn, I think, um, in, in writing out a solo, writing out an etude for yourself. But hopefully, you know, I wanted to go over some of this with I don't you. Know if you guys probably need this, but uh, one scale that I really love, and some of you were with me last term, we did Anuman, beautiful Django ballad. And he uses this, Django used this, I talk like Django's still alive. Django used this scale quite a bit, the melodic minor scale. So the harmonic minor scale is often on the five chord or the two chord or the four chord, <laughs> even um, as a prep chord. But when you actually resolve it on the one chord, the melodic minor is kind of, to me, the choice scale. I've heard Django use it so much that it's now kind of in my head. So on measure 17 here, that's the D melodic minor. but I'm, I'm implying the five chord of G minor. So I'm actually turning that D minor into D7 just for that one measure. And then G minor. Hey, you have a few, of course, already. If a bossa dorado was one of them where I just like, that's all, the whole A2 just moving it around, can't play it. Um, but then, then I take this little phrase and I'm really big on taking it, many of you know from the etudes, it's all about trying to connect things. So after I did this on the G minor, then I moved it down three frets, down three frets, down three frets, down three frets. Down three frets. Then I put it open there just so I could transition to that open string lick on measure 11. And then to the D, that phrase that we just talked about. But th that's this is classic. This is one of my uh, favorite I kind of licks again. I call them quick licks. It's just an exercise, <laughs> but it sounds cool. And then to connect it into something a little bit more musical. That's part of the diminished scale, the eight note scale, the octatonic scale, the eight note half whole diminished. So it's just a symmetrical pattern. Instead of just doing the arpeggio, you could do a scale fragment of it. You'll hear me do this quite a bit. I love that idea that that scale fragment so it's not just the dim seven arpeggio and yes you can still move it around every three frets it's symmetrical